As explained in the introduction, the measurement system comprises of several elements. Each one of these contributes to variation in the measurement process. The repeatability and the reproducibility study evaluates the contribution of the appraiser and the instrument to the measurement system variation. The R&R &R study establishes the capability of the measurement system to resolve the part-to-part -part variation. The study examines usefulness of the measurement system to measure the process under consideration. To perform a R&R &R study, we select a minimum of 10 parts per measurement. These parts should span across the tolerance range and should adequately represent the variation in the process. A few parts may also be selected falling outside the tolerance zone. These will establish the instrument capability of detecting rejection. The selected parts are measured by several appraisers. We make sure that all the appraisers who normally use the instrument participate in the r, &R study. Each appraiser measures a part two to three times. To avoid bias in evaluation, we randomize the sequence in which the readings are taken. The readings obtained from the r, &R test are subjected to analysis. We enter the study data in the Pro-MSA r, &R worksheet. Pro-MSA offers us the flexibility of configuring the number of appraisers, parts, and trials. The default value of confidence level is 95% and that of coverage factor is 99.72%. These are used to perform statistical calculations on our data. Any other value of confidence or coverage may be used only with prior customer agreement. GRR is compared with the variation observed in the current study. In case we want to compare GRR with the process tolerance, we type in the tolerance value in our worksheet. Similarly, a comparison of GRR can be made with process variation. We type in the process standard deviation into the worksheet in this case. The process standard deviation is obtained from our historical SPC studies. To compare GRR with a process based on target PPK, we type in our target PPK and a tolerance into the r, &R study worksheet. Comparison of GRR with study variation helps you to compare the quantum of GRR error with the variation observed in the current study. If you believe that the parts under evaluation do not adequately represent the process, GRR can be compared with the historical process variation. Process variation data may not be available when planning for measurement systems before the production commences. In such cases, GRR may be compared with the design tolerance. The planned process may need to run with a minimum desired process capability. GRR should then be compared with the tolerance after factoring in the planned PPK. Critical information about the behavior and suitability of the measurement system can be obtained from graphical analysis. The first tab displays the control charts of all the readings. An X-bar and range chart is plotted for each appraiser. Observe whether every range chart falls within the upper control limit of ranges. Range charts within control indicate stability of the measurement process. If the range chart shows points out of control, investigate for assignable causes that may have crept into the measurement process. These could be typically in form of loose fixtures, disturbed settings, or errors in recording. The region within the X-bar chart control limits represents the blind zone of the instrument. In this region, the repeatability error overshadows the instrument. The instrument is not capable of differentiating one part from another. The purpose of any measurement is to differentiate parts and evaluate the real part-to-part -part variation as accurately as possible. For the instrument to be effective, most of the points on the X-bar chart 
should lie outside the blind zone. It is recommended that you should see at least 50% of the points outside the X-bar control limits. If you find most of the points within the blind zone, the instrument may not be suitable to measure the process under study. You should consider selecting another instrument with a finer resolution. Since each one of the X-bar chart represents the same set of parts, the chart runs and relative positions of the parts should fairly match across appraisers. One of the charts shifting either above or below the rest could be an indicator of appraiser bias. This can be evaluated from the stack charts and the run charts that compare readings across appraisers. The bar chart compares the relative contribution of the appraiser variation and the equipment variation as compared to the total variation. The contribution of equipment and appraiser variation should be low for the measurement system to be really effective. The analysis of RNR data can be done by one of the three methods recommended. The range and average method estimates the variations based on ranges across extreme readings. This method, however, does not capture interactions between parts and appraisers. Estimates made by the range and average method do not take into account every reading taken in the study, and hence is not very accurate. It is not the preferred method of analysis. The AIAG MSA manual recommends the ANOVA method. The ANOVA method resolves the observed variation more accurately and takes into account an interaction between appraisers and parts. The interaction estimate tells you whether there is a difference in the way each appraiser handles the parts. If a significant contribution of an appraiser to part interaction is observed, the error can be reduced by operator training and robustizing measurement fixtures. Measurements involving destructiveness or cases where the part undergoes a change are termed as non-replicable measurements. In such cases, the same part cannot be measured by several appraisers through multiple trials. Pro-MSA provides nested ANOVA to analyze the results of such tests. Due to the destructive nature of the tests, more parts are required. Such parts that represent the same measurement should come from a homogeneous batch. They can be generated by splitting a single sample into homogeneous parts. We analyze the data using nested ANOVA feature of ProMSA. The observed variation will be resolved into appraiser variation, instrument variation, and an interaction of parts within appraisers. The analysis will show the variation contributions. The AIAG MSA manual recommends that the percent GRR should be less than 10% for accepting a measurement system. A percent GRR between 10 and 30 percent may be accepted for non-critical characteristics with the concurrence of the customer. A percent GRR of larger than 30 percent is not acceptable for a measurement system. An important metric in the RNR study is the number of distinct data categories. The NDC represents the number of distinct steps the measurement system takes to measure the total variation. The AIAG MSA manual recommends a minimum value of 5 for NDC. A NDC of 5 means that the measurement system can measure the process tolerance or variation in 5 steps. You can thus have enough control to center the process in the center 20% zone of the tolerance. If the results of the RNR test are not satisfactory, the element causing excessive variation should be looked into. Such elements should be addressed on the basis of the mechanics of measurement. Often, the RNR test shows that a measurement system is not suitable to measure the process under study. It highlights the need for using a better resolution measuring equipment. The action required may often be making a correct choice of measuring equipment for a given process. An excessive appraiser influence in the measurement system variation may lead to the need of appraiser training or employing fixtures and automation. Such actions would minimize the influence of appraisers on the measurement process. 
The R and R study should be performed when any of the factors affecting measurements undergo a change. The R and R study should be performed when there are new appraisers introduced into the measurement process. Any change in the mechanism of measuring equipment will need a fresh R and R study to be done. If the process making the parts undergoes a change, the R and R study will need to be redone to confirm a continued suitability of the measurement system to the change process.